All right, folks, Nate here with Nate's Electronics and Modifications. This um, lecture we're going to be going over is the basics of a distortion pedal for the guitar. If you um, recall or viewed my last lecture on the common emitter amplifier, we did a simple demonstration of how the common emitter amplifier actually boosts the input signal and makes it larger as an output. Therefore, if you plug in a device such as, I use an example, a guitar, and plugged into a speaker, it ended up boosting the signal. Well, this is a little bit different here. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating distortion. That's right, for all you rocker fans out there. We like distortion. We like overdrive. And this is probably the easiest, simplistic distortion pedal you can make out there. And it sounds excellent for how simple it is. And it works pretty good, actually. So we're going to go ahead and go over um, the parts we need for this, and I'm going to go over how it's hooked up, and then we're going to go into some simple theory of um, how these amplifier circuits work inside here to boost the signal. So let's go ahead and look at the schematic. Um, if you want to go ahead and pause your video and get a good view of it, this is our schematic um, and our components we'll need. Now I do want to keep in mind, right here we have a 100k ohm variable resistor hooked up. You can actually use a 50 kilo ohm resistor as well. And that's the case here. I cannot find my 100k ohm resistor for this demonstration, so instead I used my 50k. So that's the parts you're going to need. You're going to need electrolytic 1 microfarad capacitor. You're going to need a diode, and this, this is a specific diode, just getting in range with those Zener diodes over there. And um, just about any one typically works. The one this um, specific, um, specif that, excuse me, I can't talk tonight, specifies is a 1N4148 diode or equivalent. I didn't exactly use that one, I just used one of the ones I happen to have in my box of goodies right here. I can't see what the number is on this one, but it works. So you can actually tweak these around and make them sound how you want. And then you're going to need a 100K ohm resistor up here coming up to your power source, coming into your transistor. And that type of transistor we're using is an NPN transistor, a 2N3904, or equivalent. Again, you can tinker around with these circuits and use a different type of NPN transistor. And again, you're going to need a 50K or 100K potentiometer. And then you're going to need a 100 nanofarad capacitor. And um, a good example, one of those right here, a lot of people get confused by reading these capacitors, but I recommend right here, this is a 104J. Now there's also the round ceramic capacitors, the round circular ones. Let me see if I have an example of those up here, just to show you right here. This isn't a 104, but you'll see on some of these I have a 104 written on there. You can actually use one of those as well if you come across one of those. But again, you can experiment, try different values in here. This is just recommendations, so you can deviate away from this. And then again, you have your output. So, of course, your input's going to be your guitar cable right here. So let's go ahead and look over the actual circuit itself and follow along here to see what's going on. And we'll compare it to this one so we're not confused. So I'll go ahead and take another quick standstill of this in case you want to take a snapshot or pause the screen here and jot this down because this circuit works and I'm going to demonstrate it here shortly. So let's go look over the circuit. Here's your input coming in. Of course, you want to have one of these grounded. It's not shown on here. I should draw it on a schematic, but I shouldn't assume people know this, but we're going to have another leg coming down here. That's going to be grounded. And of course you're going to have one on your output coming out here. It's going to be a ground. So of course we have our guitar plugged in right here. This is going to be our ground point. The signal is going to come in right here. And then if you ever look at your capacitors, your electrolytic capacitors, you have a white side right here to let you know that it's polarized and you want to pay attention to that because that means this side is the negative side and the other side is positive. If you reverse it the circuit won't work. You want to pay attention to that so make sure you have that negative side facing towards your input right here. And if you ever look at the schematic symbol for these capacitors the curved side is your negative. So we want to use a 1 microfarad so we have a 1 microfarad coming in and then if you follow it right here th through we come across a node right here, which we have our diode coming across, 
and then straight across into here, it goes into our base of the transistor. So if you look at the circuit, it's coming off. Here's our node, got our diode, and then we got our base. Now let's go look at the top part up here. Coming off from the, um, the collector of the transistor, we have a resistor coming up, our 100K, and that's going to our 9 volts DC. I'm actually using a little bit less. I think I like about an 8.47 voltage being applied to this for my power supply. But regardless, it still works. And then let's go ahead. We have, see we have our diode capped in right here. And then coming across, we hit that regular 100 nanofarad capacitor, which is right here. And if you come out in this leg, keep following it, it's going to come in to our potentiometer. And then the middle leg right here, this is the portion where you vary. When you turn the knob, when you turn this, that's going to change your resistance value. And of course, it's going to affect your output. And this comes out, and boom, that goes in your amplifier. And then here's your ground. So this is a simple design of this circuit. Again, this is probably the easiest one you could do for a distortion pedal, and it works great. And you can get more um, fancy with these. You can add an LED so you know it's on. You can get a double pull, double throw switch, so when you engage the switch, it bypasses all the distortion circuitry here and just goes straight through your cable and bypasses the pedal so you can have a, you know, not engage the pedal and push the button and engage it, just like a regular pedal. So let's go ahead and look at some basic theory on how, um, these transistors work inside these pedals. I got some examples here what's going on. Now, th again, this is just theory, so things do change. So what we're going to look here is how to determine your gain being used inside the circuit. And again, a lot of us rockers and guitarists out there, we like gain. We like lots of it. Some of us don't, you know, but, you know, I like gain. <laughs> but, again, I like to back off on it and get a good clean signal. But So this is our formula for the gain in this circuit. Right now, what we know is we know our resistance of our collector, which is R1, and we know the resistance of the emitter. And this is the portion that's going to change. And I'm going to show you what happens is as we change this resistance, our gain is going to change on our output. So this is going to show how our sign, our wave's going to be affected on our output, which is going to cause distortion. And you're going to see when we adjust this um, in our demonstration, it's going to change. So let's go ahead and use a simple formula here. If you take 100 kilo ohms, which we have, and if you have this set for 100 kilo ohms, you're going to have a gain of 1. So that means when you strum your typical guitar, your single coil pickups, um, they usually vary between 100 millivolts to about 1 volt. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and just use one millivolt. So if you strum that guitar and you're generating 100 millivolts by the induction pr principles, properties of your pickups, your output's going to produce 100 millivolts. So if we go ahead and determine our output gain, this is the formula for that. You take your V out over your voltage in, over the resistance of your collector and the resistance of the emitter. And this is going to come down to some basic algebra concepts. I'm not going to go ahead and get into depth with these. If um, you're not too confident with math, I recommend watching um, some math lecture videos and then come back to this. But this is pretty simple. You're basically just going to cross multiply. Right now, we don't know our voltage of our output. So we're going to cross multiply that, boom, down to our 100K. And then we're going to cross multiply 100 millivolts and 100 kilo ohms right here. Fact, solve this all out, and your output's going to be 100 millivolts. So if we go ahead and look over here with example one, this is our peak to peak value, 100 millivolts. When you strum that guitar, it creates an alternating value. It's going to go up 100 millivolts, down to negative 100 millivolts, and up, and so on. So our output is going to be the same because, again, nothing's being changed. But let's go to example two. Let's say we change that value from 100 kilo ohms on a potentiometer down to 50 kilo ohms, our gain is going to be changed to 2. So when you multiply this out, same way, we want to find our voltage output. It ends up becoming 200 millivolts. So again, if we look at a graph over here of example 2, here's our input again, 100 millivolts peak to peak. But then we come out to our output, we got 200 millivolts peak to peak. So of course, it goes up higher and down lower creates a bigger waveform. And then finally, let's go up to example three. Let's say we want to just 
dime to sting out a little bit more and get 10 kilo ohms. Increase that gain to 10. So we increase that gain to 10, solve this again, we get 1,000 millivolts or 1 volt. But if you look at the graph, you have a small signal coming in from your guitar, and then your output from the pedal is going to get bigger. And what happens is when these signals start to get bigger, they eventually start to distort. And then we're not going to get it in this lecture, but what happens is if you have diode clipping involved, you have your sine wave come up, and it's going to clip go down, clip, something like that, I can't remember exactly, but these principles is what causes your amp or your pedal to create distortion. Back in the day, of course, you use valve, your tubes in your amplifier, the louder you get it, the more they saturate, the more overdrive you get. Of course, that's how Hendrix got his tone and Eric Clapton back in the day. But, you know, nowadays we can't blow people's ears out playing in a little nightclub, so they've invented distortion pedals. But you can also use them to actually add more spice to your tone, even if you're loud. You can kick it up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this. I'm going to go downstairs, and I'm going to show you this example hooked up to the guitar. So stand by one second, and we're going to walk on down there. Okay, so we're down in my music room right now. We have our pedal set up right now. And right now I'm playing through a PV, an older PV amp, through one of my um, Gibson Les Pauls right here. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this as well through the Marshall amp here and see how it sounds. I didn't try it out yet in that. We're going to try through the Marshall and then of course we'll try through a Fender American Stratocaster just to give you an idea how your tone's affected by these. But right now I have the amp on a good clean setting plug straight in. Let me set my phone down here for a minute just to let you hear what's going on. So here's the guitar with a good clean tone. <laughs> So now, I'm going to go ahead and pause again here and hook up the pedal, and then we're going to hear how that sounds. Alright, so now we got the pedal hooked up. Our input right here, this is coming from straight out of my guitar, plugged right into the input, and the output is ran straight into the amplifier. So I'm going to set my phone down here, and I'm going to strum around with this and let you hear the tones of this thing. And it sounds pretty good, so right now I have the volume on full on the guitar, and here we go. <laughs> So let's go ahead and adjust that potentiometer right here. Again, remember, as we change the resistance, the sine wave is going to get bigger. So let's increase the volume. Notice it gets a little bit louder. Let's go ahead and decrease the volume. Now this gets quieter. So there you go, that is a simple distortion pedal. So I'm going to go ahead and um, set it up here with um, a Fender Strat real quick and then we're going to go ahead and plug it into the Marshall and see how that sounds. Okay, so right now I got um, the Fender American Stratocaster with some Vintage 62, 63 pickups in this, and um, right now we're going to show you the clean signal. Um, as you can see, this actually boosts it so much that um, I have the volume pretty far down on the amp, so you, don't really, you better hear it on the amp. So that's the clean coming in, so I'm going to pause this, and let's go ahead and hook it up to the pedal. All right, so now we got the pedal hooked up, and let's, uh, let's see how it sounds. <laughs> I mean, it kind of has like a big muff tone to it. You get those good David Gilmore tones out of there. So, yeah, 
that. Oops, sorry, camera fell. <laughs> so let's go ahead and um, hook this up to the Marshall real quick with the Strat and see how this bad boy sounds. All right, so right now I'm plugged straight into the Marshall amplifier from the Strat. So let's go ahead and um, play this. Oops, I have a bad cable. I need to get a better one. So let's try it. This is a clean signal. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up the pedal here and see how it sounds. Again, I have to keep the volume low on this amp because this pedal like boosts the hell out of it. All right, so now we're plugged the pedal from the guitar straight on into the amplifier. So let's go ahead and um, see how this thing sounds. Let's set my phone down here and here we go. You pick up some radio stations on us actually because again this is such a simple a pedal that there's no filters on us to actually filter out some radio stations so yeah you can probably hear that right now but here we go so let's try it So you can see this pedal is actually um, not too bad for just a transistor, capacitor, two capacitors, and a diode, potentiometer. So again, this is um, Nate's Electronics and Modifications. Um, please feel free to ask questions on this or post any other cool videos you have with um, this topic or anything electronics because I love this stuff and have a good passion for it. So thank you for watching this if you watched it. And please um, give me a thumbs up and share this video with other viewers. And uh, if you have any suggestions or um, any cool information you want to share, please post it down below. So this is all for lecture purposes and, you know, learning about this stuff. Because, you know, I'm sure somebody out there wants to know how these things work. So again, this is Nate's Electronics and Modifications. Thank you.